Welcome back to the ICF Mountain House build. As you may have seen in previous videos, we are in drywall now. Everything is mudded, sanded, and taped. With the exception of the ceilings, a lot of people had questions about, why didn't you do the ceilings? We're gonna plank those with tongue and groove pine. Uh, have to order that and get that stained, acclimated to the environment in here for a week or so before I do that. Uh, but before I do that, I want to get some texture on these walls and not have to be tripping over planks. So I haven't ordered those yet, but that's the answer to that question. Why are the ceilings still blank? So texture, I uh, don't know how to do texture in, in that I've never done it before, but I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and it doesn't look that difficult. The drywall guys don't do texture. They want them slick and ready to paint. So I was like, all right, well, I'll figure it out. It doesn't look that difficult. Like I said, I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I think we can pull this off together. And uh, so if you're looking to do something like that, I'm gonna do a little bit of experimentation and we'll figure out what the best way is, at least for us to get through that. We're going to try and do sort of a old world plaster looking, some, some call it knockdown or skip trowel type of finish. Uh, and then once everything's done and we trim out the windows and doors with like stained wood, it'll look kind of like an old timey ski lodge, sort of Skyrim-y, just lodge type of deal. I don't know, hard to explain. We're gonna start with just I'm gonna broom off all of the walls because where they sanded, there's still drywall dust on there. Uh, I've heard and seen different opinions as to whether you should prime the walls before you put texture on. And in many cases, yes, if you're gonna do like spray hopper type of texture, uh, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna actually be spreading mud on the wall. And so we need that bare sheetrock so that the mud will stick to it. Then when we're finished texturing, we'll do the primer. We'll do a PVA coat of primer that actually seals the drywall paper and compound and creates a good substrate for actual paint. But first, we're gonna clean off the walls and then we're gonna make up, mix up some mud and play around with some different tools and techniques on some scraps to come up with our little formula to do the walls. I'm not gonna do all the walls, places like closets and things like that where you don't really want a lot of texture to grab lint and dust and things we'll leave those slick ceilings we're going to leave slick uh, this is more of just an accent piece type of deal for uh, to add ambience and texture to the walls well texture to the house let's get to work <laughs> ready to go once they sand because they use uh, one of those round sanding pads hooked to a vacuum cleaner but there's a lot of dust left on the wall so got to get that off so that the compound and the primer and all that will stick to the wall otherwise it just sticks to the dust Especially when I get in the corners and all of the seams where there's joint compound. That's where most of the dust is. All right, just finished vacuuming up the whole house, all the walls, all the ceilings, got all the dust off. <laughs> then I realized I needed to go around and clean up these edges where the drywall is a little bit proud of the framing because I need to measure and uh, sort of mark where my casing is gonna be so that when we texture, I don't really texture in that area. Otherwise I'll end up with a very textured surface that I can't then nail the casing to the wall and it'd be flush. So 
trying to do this in the right order. Or I, I don't know. I could put the doors in, get all the casing on, and then do the uh, texture. But I don't have the doors yet. And uh, I think if I just mark it off and I'm, clo and I'm close, we'll, we'll be able to get that done. But uh, now i got to vacuum up a little bit more again. So next, I'm going to go along and figure out what size casing I'm going to put on each door. I mean, most of them are going to get four inch. Uh, and then we'll do some sort of cool header casing at the top. But some areas are kind of cramped, like on the insides of doorways like this, you can't fit four inch casing in there. So, you know, there'll be like a two and a half to a three, and then we'll have to blend it and make it look right on the inside. But, you know, all the exterior walls you see, uh, exterior of the rooms that you see, uh, we can do four inch casing, make it all look nice from a, sort of a, for visitors to see, but whatever. When I designed the house, I didn't design it for the size of the casing. I, I just tried to maximize the room space and make the doors all big enough to fit wheelchairs through. So that's a lesson learned when you're designing your house, make sure you allow for the width of your casing. Okay, so I just take my combination square, set it to the width of the casing that I want. One, two, three, this will be a four inch casing. And just kind of go along and make a mark. This is why I had to trim the sheetrock. So that we have a uh, straight line, fairly straight at least. And that'll just give me my outline. So I know not to put texture over this line. Like I said, my head casing might do six inch head casing. Some sort of a rustic craftsman -y style. Not real sure yet, but we'll do at least four inches for sure. So mark that. This is what we're going to do to most of these walls. Let me show you how I did it. So, had some extra mud left over from the drywall guys. As soon as you open this stuff, it pretty much starts to harden, even when you reclose it. But <clears throat> it was soft enough that I could add some water. Got some goop in my mud pan here. And I'm just using a 10 inch knife to kind of just random put a thin coat thin coat the good part about this is there's no you don't have to be perfect the whole point of it is to be imperfect so that gave me my weird random texture pattern. And the cool part is just take a bag or a piece of plastic. Now this by itself, pretty good. But this drag little peaks off of it. And I have this knockdown knife, which is basically a uh, about a 14 inch windshield wiper blade squeegee type deal. So that's a soft rubber edge. Keep this clean and wet, and just barely drag it across and knock down those peaks. The 
that makes a really cool old plastery looking texture. Hey look, trees are back. So I'm using a 10 inch knife and a mud pan and I'm just trying to get random patterns of a very thin layer on here. It's completely different than mudding and taping where you're trying to get a perfect joint, a perfect flat smooth uh, finish. Here you can just mess with it. Just get a little thin layer of mud on the wall. And then Jamie will come behind me and texture it a little bit with a bag. I'll show you that. All right, so after he goes through and puts the joint compound on, I just get these old um, bags from the grocery store, plastic bags, and then I bunch them up so it's nice and wrinkly and just kind of stamp randomly the wall. It's gonna create this pattern And textured. Just like that. And now we don't want it to look like a bag was stamped. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this squeegee thing. That's a knockdown knife. And then we're going to take this squeegee thing, otherwise known as a knockdown knife. I get yelled at for not using technical terms. <laughs> And you have to have the screw side up because I get yelled out for using a screw side down. And you just gently drag over it in half circles going in different directions. And that's going to knock down those peaks and kind of give it that really cool texture. And it's okay if there are lines that are left from the knockdown knife because that's going to just add more texture and make it cool. Now, the one thing you don't like, want. I'll see if I can get it to do it. Yeah, just like that. If you if it skips across the top, it'll create these little ripples, and that doesn't look real nice. If that happens, just restamp it. I'll see I did it again. You don't have enough pressure. It has to be light pressure, but not too light at all, or it'll skip. And you can see where it gives you that old world plaster look where it's kind of you get the lines in there, but then you kind of have like the pockets and then the raised ridges above it. And that's gonna look really cool. So just playing around here, seems like if you put it on a little thicker, it does texture better, but I'm trying to balance because we don't want to just put a bunch of weight on the walls and plus we want to, you know, not have to buy 30 buckets of mud. But just finding that little ratio is what I'm working on now. How much mud to put on the walls so that you get a good, good amount of texture when we go behind it with a bag. Figure it's gonna be about one bucket of mud per room. It's a little thicker on this wall, which gives it a little bit more texture. And you should be able to see it a little bit better with the lighting. Um, with the flat lighting hitting this wall directly, it's a little bright, it's kind of hard to see the texture. But since we're at an angle here, you can kind of see a little better where I'm going. So just stamping the wall with this uh, grocery bag. And then I'm going to go through with this knife and gently drag it across in the kind of half circles. And you can see where it just kind of knocks down the top but it kind of leaves these little pockets and that's what you want. Which is this old world style that we're looking for. 
and randomness. We don't want any kind of patterns in the wall. And it's okay if you can still see some of the lines because I think that just kind of adds to it. This is something we don't want. And so just restamp it and go over it again. I ended up using one whole bucket for two walls. This is a fairly large room though. So we're getting the next bucket set up. We're gonna mix it with some water to thin it out a bit. And then we're gonna do the remaining two walls in here. Two buckets per room. A lot more than I thought it would be. A lot more than I thought it would take. But, gotta do what you gotta do. It's like cake frosting right out of the bucket. So you gotta thin it to turn it into thin cake batter. So after having done about three buckets of mud, I switched to basically doing a skip trowel technique, which kind of saves us a lot of mud and a lot of time, because it does quite a bit of texture. Put some on, scrape it off, kind of just to get the paper wet, and then take a little bead and just kind of lightly graze it and then if you get too much on just scrape it off take a tiny bead and this gives you some really cool texture and then you have you don't have to stamp it quite as much and seems to take a lot less compound to do it that way. So let's 
kind of, like I said, smearing down a coat just to get it, get the paper wet, which seems to work better. And then just kind of roll. If it's too wet, it doesn't want to cooperate. And if you got too much mud, kind of doesn't want to cooperate either. So, definitely takes practice. But, seems to be working pretty well. And it's, I think it's the look we're looking for. So a lot of people want to know why we're not doing smooth walls after spending all that time and money trying to get the walls perfect. Well, we were always going to texture the walls. It's just those drywall guys, they don't do that. And people who do do that charge quite a bit of money. So they didn't charge any extra to you know make smooth walls. That's what they do. That's, that's their basic deal. They do three coats of mud, sand it down, leave it ready for you to paint it. But texturing parts up to us. Why are we doing texture? Because we're going for sort of the old world style, French country, plastered, natural materials, wood, stone, that kind of deal. May not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's my case of beer. is called skip trowel because you're just letting the trowel skip along. You're dragging it till it looks like you want it to look. And then if you don't like it, scrape it off. Get you a little bit. Do a whole new pattern. Osha would love me.
well that was one heck of a job man that took me an entire week very tedious went through 12 buckets of mud but it's finally finished i'm glad i'm really happy with how it turned out i'm gonna let it kind of dry for a day or two perfect weather right now kind of low humidity mid 60s and then uh, i'll go start masking off all these windows and doors and get ready to shoot primer so we'll prime the ceilings back roll prime all the walls let that dry and then i think i'll do the first coat of paint just as the base coat and then uh, move on to the next stuff we'll start doing trim and do our ceiling and things like that so that'll do it for this one thanks for watching see you in the next video